All right, should be working. All right, perfect. Um, so uh, here I'm just gonna give a brief kind of uh, uh, overview of what I'm gonna be doing um, in terms of QGIS to actually get uh, this final hiking trail working. So um, yeah, let's get started. So uh, I've already downloaded um, and imported the TIF file into QGIS and basically I just uh, overlaid Google Maps to make it a little bit more visually pleasing and then added uh, the slope which is something that we've already done so I'm just going to be going over things that we have not yet done um, so right now I'm zooming into into exactly where my hike is going to be. It's going to be from this old fire station up to Stoddard Peak. So there we go, like right around there. And the reason that I'm kind of keeping it within this window is actually somewhat important, but um, it's because right now I'm going to go to clip um, this area uh, as, as the extent to which I will be working with. So. I'm actually going to clip the surface layer and I'm going to click um, actually use map canvas extent. I guess I could draw but I'm just going to use the window that I zoomed into um, and I'm going to save this um, let's just save it as map extent save it, save it into my JS folder and then okay should be able to run so close out of this and you'll be able to see if I zoom out on click slope so this is the extent to which I'm going to be working with this right here is the um, um, I guess the extent that I would have been working with but that's a, a lot of data so a lot of the processing would have taken a very long time um, so actually you know what I'm just going to remove these layers make it a little bit less complicated um, and then what am I gonna do here I'm gonna rename this Sorry. Uh, let's rename it to surface underscore extent save that I'm gonna change the symbology a little bit of this really fast so let's change to hill shape look good so there we go so now it's a little bit more visually pleasing um, I guess this is kind of what the watershed of this area looks like but um, looks pretty nice you can see the Mount Baldy Road kind of winding there so now I'm going to extract the slope we've already done this before so it's nothing new um, that looks good. Let's save it as slope final. It's GIS. Save that. And then we're going to run it. Awesome. So let's see. So the slope looks good now. And now we're going to um, extract the contour. It's not how you spell contour. There we go. Um, we have also already done this. Um, and I'm going to keep it as 10 meters because that's a, a little bit better for hiking. Um, and then we're, I'm going to save it as contour. Awesome. So I'll run that. Gonna change um, the symbology of this a little bit, although it kind of looks cool. I kind of like that red, but now I'm gonna change it to black. Actually, that's pretty good. Now we have 
the contour lines. This actually look, looks pretty good. Um, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm gonna, just so that we have the contours in Google Maps, I'm gonna um, import the two points of interest. So this point right here, Stoddard Peak, and, and this, this point right here, the old fire station. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go to this uh, delimited text, or I don't really know how to say that. Origin is where I'm gonna begin. Um, and right here you can see that it's marked as X and Y. Um, and then I, I, I'm gonna change this coordinate reference system in a second, but um, for right now, I'll leave it as is. Uh, same thing, X and Y. So now, oh, did I not actually import? Oh, oops. I don't think I actually. <laughs> Destination. I think I just press close. All right, so now I'm going to change the symbology of these really fast. This is origin, right? Yeah, okay. I like to think of the beginning as, as being green. I'll just leave it like that. And then the, the end is being red, right? So it kind of looks good, beginning, end. And now, like I said, I have to, uh, so if you go here and you look at the coordinate reference system of this layer, you'll see that it's this one right here. And I just usually go by the, the number associated I don't know, like the five digit number right here. So this is 26911. Um, if you look at this one, it's the same thing, 26911. But when you go to this origin, I've done this a couple of times, it, it's different, right? So we need to make sure that that's the same. So I'm going to plug in 26911 and select so that we're using the same coordinate referencing system. The reason I'm doing this is because if you if you try to do any sort of uh, manipulation in the future, it, it'll just say that your CRS is not the same, and that, which just messes everything up. Okay, so now the coordinate systems are the same. So the next thing that um, that I'm going to do, so I'm going to use the mapping tool. Um, called least cost path and how this one works is basically when I created that slope map here I assigned higher values um, at, as being greater slopes and lower values as lower slopes so what this least cost path function does is it associates the higher slopes higher values as higher costs, lower slopes as lower costs, and it will um, plot a line between the origin and the destination that is, uh, I guess, the least expensive according to those, um, to the slopes and, and the associated costs with them. So uh, it's trying to find the, the lowest costs, so it would be the easiest graded option from point A to point B, which would likely be the easiest way to hike from point A to point B because hiking over really difficult slopes would be difficult. So that's why I'm using least cost path. This is a, this is a plugin that I added. Um, you could end up going by what's already within QGIS, but I decided against that because I didn't want to create a cost map and then, and then associate these different things. This one just does it all in one go. So I'm going to use the slope because uh, I want the lowest slope. Start point will be my origin, end point will be my destination. And I will call this um, um, let's just do hiking trail. Oh, final. All right. Save that, and then I'll run it. And th this is gonna take a really long time, so I'm gonna speed up uh, this process when you're watching. 
All right, awesome. So, uh, so it looks like, uh, looks like it it was generated the least cost path. So let's check it out. All right, it's kind of difficult to see, but let's just switch it up here. Uh, make it red, yeah, and then half a millimeter. Nope, that is not what I wanted. A simple red line. Okay, again half. Okay. Awesome. All right, cool. Check that out. So this, is, I think this is pretty interesting. This is the easiest graded hike from point A to, to point B, from the beginning here to the started peak. Now, Graham and I already did this hike. Um, not this way though, uh, which is what makes it interesting. We parked here. That's why we know that we can get to this point. And uh, we started hiking and Graham wanted to go here, I imagine. He just wanted to go right there um, for whatever reason. So we went there and then we just kind of followed this ridge all the way up uh, to the peak. But I was kind of interested in seeing what would JS tell us our best option would be. And it looks like this is probably the easiest option. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, when we, I guess, do it if, if that's, that's the case. So I won't do that, but I will plug in this. Um, man, that, that just looks really interesting, I think. Maybe you don't agree with me. Um, so the next step I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to show you guys the elevation profile of this hike right here. So I already installed the plugin. It's called Terrain Profile. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select uh, two different layers. So surface, which is that hill shade right there. I'm going to add it. And then I'm going to do the same thing for slope. Um, I'll change slope to, let's say, green. Um, and then instead of creating a line, I'll do selected layer. So this is what this is going to do is I'm going to select this, uh, this, this trail, and then it's going to show me the slope profile of the trail and then also the elevation profile. So I'll do that one at a time so that you guys can see what it looks like. So when I click on Hiking Trail Final, look at that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, this is basically, you can see a little red dot moving along the trail. This is basically showing me the elevation of that line that I just plotted all the way to the top, so from the, the, the beginning down up to the top. Um, and it also shows me on the x-axis and the y-axis the number of meters, I presume. Um, uh, that's that uh, I'm going to be hiking. So it's going to be around 3,000 meters in length, which is what um, less than two miles, and then from like 700 to 1,400, so around 700 meters in. Um, in elevation gain but a lot of that is starting from here up so it's going to be steep it's going to be less than a thousand meters and around 600 meters of elevation gain which is that, that, that's pretty it's pretty tough but Graham and I are pretty good hikers so I'm going to unclick there and I'm going to show you guys the slope so it should be further down right here there we go so as you can see, this now shows me the slope profile. So in the beginning, the slope is very, very easy. But as you start to go on, the slope gets more difficult. Now this isn't showing like up, down, up, down, up, down. This is just the, the degree of the slope. So um, if you could imagine, I guess, like going up a set of stairs, uh, this peak right here would be a very steep and then this kind of drop right here would be like a landing that you, you you get on and then 
so on and so forth. So it's not, I guess, like I, I won't be going up there and down, if that makes any sense. So yeah, and then you can plot them both together and you get kind of a cool map. Um, the elevation profile of this hike that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to save it as um, elevation profile final. Nope, not profile. That is not what I meant. Okay, profile. And then uh, to my actually, no, let's save it. And now that's saved. Um, and then the final thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this, but the final thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, extract this entire project as a um, geospatial PDF. The reason I'm going to do that is that so that I can import it into an app on my phone called Avenza, which would let me pull this up and track my GPS along this route. Um, the, you can use geospatial PDFs or geotiffs uh, to do this, but to get a geotiff, I, I would have to convert this hiking trail into a, a raster, because right now I think it's like a vector layer, so I'd have to make it a raster layer, which you can do, and then you would have to export it as, um, as, uh, as a geotiff from there. Um, but I found that it's just easier to go here and then to export the map as a PDF, basically. So, um, so this is the extent of the map. Yeah, so, so now this is the extent of the surface layer. So th this is going to be the total distance of the map that I end up exporting. And I'm also going to do this, I'm going to click Create Geospatial PDF. The reason I'm, I'm going to be doing that is so that I, w I can import it into the app and it will know the general location of this PDF. It won't give me too much information, but if I just import it as a PDF, it would have no idea, the app would have no idea where I am. This will have a general, uh, the, I'll have a general sense, it'll have a general sense of where I am. Um, so that all looks good. Uh, then I'll save it. And I'll save it as final hiking map GIS. And I'll save it to GIS. And right now it's working. And when that's done, basically I'm done. So uh, thank you guys for paying attention. I, I know that. You guys probably aren't going to pay attention but um, to this just because it's so long but uh, but yeah that that's basically how I did this and I think it's pretty cool I might use it in the future um, if I ever <laughs> have the data available <laughs> to me where I can import it um, but it was kind of fun so um, thank you for paying attention